Hello, everyone, and welcome to this short webinar on understanding the emergence of the DevSecOps movement. Let's not waste any time. So first up, I'll give an introduction about myself. It's a bit shameless, but uh, I think it's good to know who you're like uh, listening to, right? And next up, we'll be covering the rise of DevOps. What went wrong with traditional SDLC and why did DevOps come into the picture, right? How exactly did DevSecOps arise as a need for security in the DevOps culture? So there's a bit of security in everything, in everything that you do, banking, finance, transportation, cab, cycle, everything has security in it. So in DevSecOps also, why was the security element necessary, right? And then we'll cover the dynamics of DevSecOps, which is where the most important part comes in. So there's this quote from Bruce Lee, right? Fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. This is relevant here because your organization is going to derive so much value out of it that it cannot match the value your organization would derive had it uh, applied any sort of SDLC technique like uh, a traditional SDLC or something like that. So let's say your organization is using the waterfall model for uh, like SDLC and some, one more organization is using proper DevSecOps like model, right? So the difference in value that these two organizations would get out of their developers, out of their security engineers, out of the time invested, out of the uh, finance invested is very huge. We'll explore more over there. And then of course we have the challenges to DevSecOps. What are the challenges that the current implementation of DevSecOps has right and next up i'll be open to more uh, questions regarding the same so um i'm a security software engineer in devsecops at a charge b i have i'm as a, a, a full-time role i've also been a course instructor for ec council for ruby on rails security for security specific to the ruby on rails framework ruby language rails framework and uh, currently i'm also doing uh a freelancing in terms of uh, a public speaking so i give talks to like universities like organizations, I conduct security awareness training uh, for like several universities and organizations. I'm also a part of Security. I also conduct such webinars, boot camps, etc. And uh, I have about four years of experience, four plus years of experience in information security, broadly information security, and out of which DevSecOps, security engineering, application security, penetration testing a little bit, and uh, online privacy and anonymity are my areas of expertise and interest. Um, I'm also a certified DevSecOps professional from an organization called Practical DevSecOps. This is one of the very more uh, prestigious certifications that exists within the DevSecOps industry. I have also completed over 15 like cybersecurity certifications from several universities like University of London, like University of San Diego, McMaster, like US Department of Defense. And my skill sets are just everything related to security, like the technical side of security so far, right? So you have security engineering, like application security, you have secure coding, secure architecture reviews, code reviews, SAST, SEA, DAST. So anything that has to do with the technical side of security, uh, minus the penetration testing part, there's just too much crowd, I guess, in, pen, in like pen testing. I also entered into security via pen testing, but then I shifted out of it because it was just too, just too much crowd there, I feel like. So yeah, I also specialize in cloud security. So you have AWS, so you have like the different uh, like IAM roles, et cetera, et cetera, and all that, right? So for AWS security architecture, DevOps and DevSecOps, uh, in terms of programming, I do specialize in Ruby on Rails and uh, Java as of now. And the rest all is just uh, not that important, right? So having said that, uh, we'll see why the DevOps movement has such a boom. How did DevOps rise? So I think about 15 years ago is when this happened, if I'm not wrong, right? So around 15 years ago, that was when the DevOps movement began. So what exactly is DevOps? DevOps is basically like a, see, I'm not going to give you guys a definition from Wikipedia. I'm going to actually explain from an industry standpoint, what is DevOps, right? So DevOps is sort of like a software engineering practice. So software engineering practices can be anything that ranges from uh, like uh, the SDLC models. How do you build code? How do you test code? How do you deploy code, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly, DevOps is a software engineering practice, which will unify two different teams, two different functions. One is software development. Second is operations. There is still one problem here though. What happened to security teams? Security teams were doing good in a traditional SDLC. They had time. They had time to do security review. Everything was going good with them, right? So what happened to them, right? So in terms of security in traditional SDLC, why did security teams have a problem when DevOps came up? So previously what happened was with the decreased speed at which software was being shipped, 
it meant more time for the security teams to look into the code and architecture. So the security teams could look into it, perform security review, code scan. They had ample of time to fix the vulnerabilities, right? But with like agile methodologies and DevOps taking over, there is like a security team, what it did, what the security team was doing in 15 days to two months, it cannot do in seven minutes. For every build that goes out, Security teams just can't run the entire security review process in seven minutes, right? So this literally meant no time for the security teams to perform their activities. This is why security took a hit. Uh, this is the DevOps model, by the way. So I'll explain this very quickly before I move on, right? So it starts over here, planning. So first you plan and then you code it. They're like the developers will sit and code it. This is phase two. And then you have phase three where this code is built, build it into some sort of a deployable unit and then deploy it, right? So once it is built and deployed, you have to test it. And then you have the release phase. Then you have the deploy phase, which is phase six. And then you have operate phase, which is phase seven. Then you have the, like the monitoring phase where you make sure things are running well. How did DevSecOps emerge? We've looked into it. Basically, DevSecOps is developer security operations. So this refers to integrating security into DevOps. You just have DevOps and you just put security inside it. Now, you might think this sounds easy, right? It sounds easy to accomplish. Just what? There's a there's a pipeline. Just make sure it is secure, right? But it's but there's a problem because DevSecOps has two sort of elements to it. One is a people element. Second one is the technology element. People element refers to the culture of DevSecOps that must exist within an organization before you start embedding the technology into it. So security teams can no longer operate in their traditional methods, you know, scheduling time for security reviews, manually sitting and providing the sign-offs, escalating the vulnerabilities. All of this is just not possible. So we have to speed up things. We have to make things fast. And how do you do that? Automation. Automation is the single best way to make things faster, is to make things brain dead so that even a computer can do it. All right, perfect. So now we look at the dynamics of DevSecOps. Now, let me explain what dynamics of DevSecOps means, right? So basically what it means is um, you can do DevSecOps in multiple ways, but DevSecOps is meant to be done in one way, the best practices. Right? So what are these best practices? First, instead of looking at what can go right, Let's be a little uh, pessimistic here and look at what can go wrong, right? First of which is the developer experience. Second thing is don't block builds with false positives at DSOM 1 or 2. Yeah, so that's point two. So no pipeline should be greater than 15 minutes. And if you don't custom fine tune the tools that you adopt, you're doing it wrong, right? And of course, as I said, don't just deploy 10 tools and say my, my pipeline is done. Too many tools causes no real change. And now that this is done, we'll quickly go over DevSecOps done right. What are the things that you have to do in DevSecOps, which will help you, right? So in order to do DevSecOps right, there must be a shift in the mindset. That is the shift in mindset, which is necessary. Of course, team up with the developers, promote a learning environment, as I said before. And um, a prediction which I would make right now is that DevSecOps isn't just here to stay. It is here to transform the way in which we practice security in our organizations. Also, DevSec ML Ops is what's next. DevSec ML AI Ops, DevSec AI Ops. This is a very uh, uh, up and coming field with not much there to go on, not much tools to go on, but it's coming. It is coming. I can see that, right? So what are the benefits of DevOps? You can ask me. This is not like those questions which they ask you during your examinations. I'll give live examples for all of these benefits. So of course, the first one, which you can already think is resilience, right? So DevSecOps will help organizations in designing and implementing resilient systems. In, in DevOps, if something goes wrong, immediately you can revert the build. In traditional SDLC, if something goes wrong, you're screwed. Second thing is speed, of course. Automation, of course, you reduce the effort of manual labor. You take effort away from the developers, engineers and put it into automation so that it's automated and these people can focus on things that matter. Then, of course, flexibility, you can make any change you want. You can make changes you want to technology. You can make changes you want to the build. You can make changes you want to the entire pipeline. And of course, like reliability, you know, customers will gain the reliability that, hey, these guys are good at security. There has been zero security incidents with them. And whatever feature that I request for, it's instantly ready in two or three days. I'll quickly cover in the next three or four minutes, what are the challenges to DevSecOps? What is wrong with it, right? I am, I'm not gonna be biased. Most tools are not easy to integrate in CICD. CICD stands for continuous integration and continuous deployment. Second thing is 
every tool will have its own nuances and one of the main problems of devsecops is many of these tools don't provide a api to the tool that we can call and spidering is hard with dashed automation and uh, tools also don't handle false positives locally there's lack of false positive handling yeah thank you so much for joining i hope you guys learned something informative bye